I want to start with one thing. I want to know, as I'm sure you know, because you write all about it, I want to know about this font. Okay. Yeah. Here's my first question about mm. this font to both of you, Lynn Oliver and Henry Winkler. How do you know that it works for kids who have well, dyslexia? Well, that's a good question. We don't know. Uh, but it is, it's worked before in um, other places where this man from Holland made it for his children because they're dyslexic. But all of the indications from people just looking at the page, people who are adult, children, people who have a learning challenge, who don't, all say, wow, you know what? It, my eye scans it a lot easier. Well, I agree with that. My eye scans it a lot easier, too. Yeah. I'm an older guy. And it's the first time that this font has ever been used in the United States, or especially in a children's book. Here's Hank. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, is the uh, concern about this font that it leaves a lot of white space? It, it, the font does several things. First of all, the letting is different so that there's more white space between the letters. Because one thing that happens with dyslexic people is they flip the letters. So if there's more distance between each letter, it's harder to flip. The second thing is that it's weighted heavier at the bottom so the letters don't actually float up on the page. And the third thing is that the ascending and descending strokes, the upward stroke in the D or the downward stroke in the G, are longer. So it makes it so that you, it's harder to confuse, for instance, a D and a B uh, because the, the, uh, they're drawn differently. Float up on the page. I've never heard that before. Well, Henry can describe to you is what that, happens to him when he reads. Are you? Are you? You have. You have I am dyslexic. You, are you dyslexic. never lose your dyslexia. You learn to negotiate it. But what happens to a lot of kids is their eyes play tricks on them, and the words are so close together, so small, uh, that they start to swim on the page. And uh, we refer to that many times uh, when Hank is reading, Hank Zipser is reading, in the older novels. And our publisher reached out um, and made a deal uh, with this font. In, um, and uh, we are very proud that we're the first ones. What, uh, what was the motivation to bring all this together? Kids' books, dyslexia. What was your motivation? Okay. I w it was suggested to me during a lull in my acting career that I write a book for children about my learning challenges. By the way, is that a euphemism for not getting some gigs for a while? That is exactly what it is. <laughs> okay. It means not working. And uh, a, a wonderful man, Alan Berger, suggested that I write these books. And I said, no, because I am dyslexic, because I, th I grew up thinking I was stupid, and I couldn't write a book. Uh, a few months later, same suggestion, same man, Alan Berger. This time he said, you know what? I'm going to introduce you to a very good friend of mine, Lynn Oliver, who knows all about children's literature. And this time I was smart enough to say, you know what? At least I'm going to try. How many books are there? There's 26. 26 now. With another six coming. And, are, and, and But these are the first ones with this font. Yes. This is, well, the, this is the prequel. Uh, Here's Hank is second grade. These are beginning readers, uh, reluctant readers. Um, but remember, after no matter what we're talking about, these are comedies first. The comedy is king. If Lynn and I don't laugh, doesn't go in the book. When do you guys, how do you do that? Do you guys uh, write together? We write actually in the same room. Henry comes to my office every day at 10. We write for about two and a half hours. And we've now developed a really nice process that, that I think accommodates for his learning differences and accommodates for, for mine. And so we talk. We both come out of uh, television comedy where the writing process takes place a great deal in a room with people collaborating. So we kind of follow those same rules and procedures. Um, what makes you laugh? Well, Henry makes me laugh. <laughs> uh, what makes me laugh is almost always character and observational humor. 
I'm not a huge fan of slapstick, although there is some kind of physical comedy in the books because kids like it. What doesn't make me laugh is puns and kind of lang- ticks of language. And uh, so there's not that much of that in, in the book. But character, th- things, our comedy arises out of the characters and out of the pathos that they're feeling. So you laugh best when you're also feeling something for the character. And then the result of that, is, uh, the letters we get, the kids say you're hysterical. That I mean, Somehow that seems to be the word, so it must be a fifth grade spelling word. And how did you know me so well? So I don't know that we could ask for better compliments than that. Henry Winkler and Lynn Oliver are author of 26 now? 26. Uh, books. The, so the, the first sets were called Hank Zipser, The World's Greatest Underachiever. Yes. And then... That, that's a, a fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And then Hank Zipser, The Mostly True Confessions of the World's Best No, that was the first title that just made me crazy. And mostly we, true. What was making yes, you crazy? The most, the whole thing. It, I hated the rhythm of it. It wasn't true. This is the greatest underachiever that ever lived, and we lobbied to change that that title that you just read to Hank Zipser, the greatest underachiever. Why did you want to write, or why do you want people to think about a great underachiever? Because one of the things um, uh, that is the the underpinning of our books is that children have to know that no matter how difficult things are for them, no matter how difficult school is, they have greatness in them. Now, I was reading a book today and talking to an author today, and it got me thinking about this because I read them both together over the week. Oh, thank you. And the books, the books was about, um, I don't remember the name, but how to embrace failure. Mm-hmm and making mistakes, mm-hmm. and learning from those mistakes is how you actually succeed. And her, her aphorism was, good judgment comes from experience, experience comes from bad judgment. Mm-hmm. In other words, we have to make mistakes, but we have to learn from them by mm-hmm. thinking about them. Right. Is that Hank? That is Hank. He, his glass is half full. He just spills it everywhere. But he learns from it. Like he learned that the whole routine with his dog he learned something about um, how to take care of that dog when it was running around the house. Right. For example, that was a scene in, in it's one of a the short reasons tale about a long that dog. Hank also makes lists, uh, and and the lists are not just funny. You know, we write them and and they uh, they make us laugh. But the lists help him organize his um, unorganizable brain. I think the most important quality he has is that he's resourceful. So if he can't do it one way, he's going to do it another way. And if he falls down, he has friends who support him, and they help him brush himself off, and he gets up and tries it again another way. And that, I think, is a really important message for kids, is there are many ways to accomplish your goal. And if you can't do it one way, you can try another technique. So the last list in this uh Here's Hank, Bookmarks Are People 2, Chapter 12, Three Things That Make You Feel Great by Hank Zipser, Your Friends, Your Family, Yourself. Now, you could get kids thinking, oh, they're trying to give me a moral lesson. It seems like you're trying to avoid any moral lessons in these books at all. Is that fair to say? You know what? Uh, We don't, we also write um, emotionally, you know, the emotional truth uh, in these books about the struggle is absolutely the way it is. And the fact of the matter is that this is something that Lynn and I have learned in our lives, uh, that things make you feel good. You've got great friends because kids write to us. Wow, I love Hank's friends because they don't judge him. Your family, because, you know, they are um, your your core and yourself yourself is the most important because um, to, to find the truth of yourself is to find power. Roald Dahl wrote books that were full of scary things, full of bad kids, full of greedy adults. Kids love those books. I love those books. But... Uh, like a musical. Yeah. Matilda. 
Matilda, just out, right? Well, I think, I think what Roald Dahl uh, tapped into is that kids are really are little subversives. You know, they're, they're handed an adult authority figure that they have to follow. And so part of their agenda is figuring a way around it so that they can get what they want because their power is kind of taken from them by parents, by school. There are a lot of rules they have to follow, soccer coaches. And so I think the reason kids love Roald Dahl so much is he was a bad little boy himself. And his characters are bad little kids. And so, But in the end, be, their heart is good. So they're getting away from all the rules and the oppression that, that kind of goes with childhood and um, in a very subversive and entertaining way. So Henry Winkler, you guys come to work together. Right. I drive to Lynn's office every day. Uh, it takes me about uh, 40 minutes. How come you still work together? What have you found in the partnership? That What have you found in the partnership? And then I'll ask Henry Winkler that. What have you found, Lynn Oliver, in the partnership that... I love our partnership, and I love it because, first of all, we have a great time and we make each other laugh. But also, there, I think Henry has an enormous capacity for empathy with the plight of children. You know, childhood is not just uh, rosy and innocent. It's difficult to na- navigate childhood. And I love Henry's recollection of his own childhood, recalling all of the, the, the difficult moments. And I tap into that, and I love hearing it. What we have you, fun. You have fun. We have fun. And um, uh, we're good at this together. Do you know? I mean, we they're, they're, we, books, we are successful things, right? uh, together. We were just asked, uh, the uh, Here's Hank just came out February 6th. And before it did, before we left on this tour around America uh, to promote these books, our publisher asked us to write four more. What makes you laugh, by the way? What What makes me laugh? Uh, I I would have to say uh, Lynn's definition was uh, really um, mine, too. Uh, Situational, uh, true, uh, funny, you know, that comes out of character. Always makes me laugh. Why, uh, Why are there drawings in here? Well... What does that do for... Here's Hank and for... And, and I mean, uh, for bookmarks for people, too, and for uh, a short tale about a long dog. Well, the Here's Hank books are intended for beginning readers. So they might be kids who are five, six, seven, eight years old. And so the illustrations, first of all, help them interpret the text. And it also breaks up the page so that it, so that you remember when you were little and learning to read when you no. came to an illustration. You don't. <laughs> I do. And when I came to either an illustration or a line of dialogue, I wanted to jump up and down and scream with joy because it meant you could rest for a second. I just read comic books. Maybe that was it. <laughs> Same you thing, know, though. Uh, this I didn't read at all. And one of the things that we do, especially in the uh, the older Hanks and Hank Zipser, the world's greatest underachiever, is Sometimes a kid has to read a, a chapter, and that you ha- you can't go to you can't watch TV unless you read your chapter. Our chapters are a paragraph with a lot of white, because it, that would have made me so happy as a kid to have that. I I I could not read. I didn't read a novel until I was thirty one. Is that right? Mm-hmm. I was too intimidated. Now you um. Dyslexia and ADHD? No, um, mostly. I read that in the bio. Huh? Yeah, I don't know why that's in there. It's uh, I didn't write it. Uh huh. So, but um, uh, I have dyslexia, and and it, uh, it I was bad in. Uh, I was allergic to school. Actually, I uh-huh. broke out in hives if I walked <laughs> through the door. How did that affect your acting? Uh, you're, you're you're having to learn scripts. Well, and I I you know what? If you want something bad enough you're going to figure out how to get it. For me, uh, I memorized as fast as I could, and I improvised. And then when people said, you're improvising, and it's not what we wrote, I would say, if I get it, I'll learn it verbatim. Right now, I'm just giving you a taste. Did that work for... It it did. I'm sitting here. (laughs) But it worked worked on uh, Happy Days? And everything, yeah. Well, Happy Days was humiliating. Monday morning, we would read around a big table. All the actors would come together. Uh, the, all the producers and the directors were sitting, um, uh, you know, in, a, in seats around the, uh, the outside of us. 
and they were there waiting to hear uh, the rhythms to see what they were going to change. I would stumble. I would stammer. I would not see words on the page. And so I uh, made it up. Did that, is that how the character evolved? The character evolved, um, from, yes, from me, from Gary Marshall, from Jerry Paris. When you said you made it up, and I, I just thought to myself all the times when you had sounds, you had words, you had gestures. Well, whoa came from my favorite sport of the time, which was horseback riding. And, you know, a girl would walk by and go, whoa. And now, of course, my favorite sport is fly fishing for trout. I have no idea what I would do if that were true then. Whoosh. Whoosh. Not cool. Uh, do you, what you just said, that you struggled, yeah. is, do you say that to the, you, you must, you guys must talk to a lot of kids. You must see a lot of kids. We say the truth. We say the truth. The most important thing, uh, I, I say it ad nauseum. You have greatness inside you. Your job is to figure out what your gift is. And then, and then uh, Lynn asks the uh, assembled uh, 500 children, what are you great at? And they say, I'm great at running. I'm great at art. I'm great at being a friend. I'm great at math. I'm great at dancing. And it's just amazing. Hmm. You know, I look at your bio, Lynn Oliver, uh, Harry and the Hendersons TV series. I'm just going to throw a bunch out there. Adventures of Corduroy Bear. Uh, as producer, uh, now you're running. You're the executive director, right? The Society for yes. Children's Books. And mm -hmm. Society of Children's Book Writers and, and Illustrators. Book Writers and Illustrators. World's most difficult yes. acronym. I like to say SCBWI because then it sounds you're like you're one of you're the few people who could scientists. actually say it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds like you're scientists. Uh -huh. um, did you have a mission? Yeah. I really do. I mean, my life is about, uh, my life and career has been about children and children's books because I grew up the opposite of Henry. I was a reader and nothing still to this day, I couldn't live without books. I couldn't live without reading. I read everything. I read all the time, nonstop on a screen, on a tablet, you know, books, magazines, uh, packages. I love to read and I love the literary world. So I think it's really important that kids can have that same pleasure, can have that same experience. Because I really believe that you learn to think from reading. Not only do you get pleasure and satisfaction, but you learn to think. And I think learning to read from a book is different than learning to read from the internet because you're in original sources and you're learning critical thinking. So yeah, I have a mission. Henry Winkler, you agree with that mission? Yes, uh, my mission is different. Uh, I, I asked children to read even though I couldn't uh, because you can leave uh, your house, uh, you can travel into space, you can go to the depths of the ocean, you can go to other countries and see wild animals and never leave your armchair. Did you feel you were missing out on that when you were a kid? I was so sad that I couldn't negotiate a book. You know, I, uh, we just told the kids, uh, we, we, we just visited Google uh, for the first time and spoke to uh, some of their employees on the author program. And they brought their kids. And it, it, it's, um, it, it's just amazing to me. When I was in high school, people would write in the margins. What the hell were they writing? <laughs> I wanted to write something. I didn't know what, a simile, uh, a metaphor, the symbolism. I never knew. I just, I felt lost. Yeah, you said that, that you felt that way in the 30s. Yeah. I, I even read, even uh, when you weren't, then you started to work on these books. I mean, you didn't have the confidence. Do you have that confidence? Now? I now have... Um, a, a confidence I never had before. I, I when I was twenty um, seven, I was interviewed once, and I said, "You know, I think I'm um, I'm going to uh, germinate late." And I, somehow, what I said then turned out to be the truth. You know, I uh, I popped open. Uh, in my late 40s and uh, 50s. 
and now? I'm I'm trying to think I'm, of that moment when you said, oh, you, you were between. When did you start writing these books? What years? 2003. So this is much. You had already come to that confidence. No. Uh, I remember I didn't want to do this. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when we, I, I just kept putting one foot in front of the other. And then Lynn taught me as we went all of the rules of writing. Uh, no, you can't do that. And you, you got to go. Uh, you got to go out the door you came in. Uh, <laughs> all these things, you know, all these writing things. Was he going and, out the window? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's one of the things I believe that you that you come full circle in a story that you go out the door you came in. It was a metaphor. Yeah. But I would like to point out that there are a lot of celebrities who have dipped into the world of children's books with much uh, less creative success. And I, th- and I think really to, to Henry's eternal credit is that he learned the process. He teamed up. We teamed up together so that we had kind of expertise in the field. It, he wasn't just tr- trading on his name as a celebrity to put a book out there that was really substandard. You know, I believe that our books hold up with the best books that are out there. And he he didn't use his celebrity as, as a way to just promote books that were less than excellent. Well, it sounds like because it was right at the core of your heart. It, it, when when we're when we're writing and it comes to that moment where I'm reliving what happened when I was eight about a spelling test or about not trying and not being able to figure out a phone number because the the numbers keep on changing as I'm dialing and I keep dialing the wrong number over and over again that emotion comes up in me in the office at Lynn's office as if it would happened yesterday and I'm 68. It's just amazing. Uh, it's amazing. It's it's I I'm proud of my children, of my grandchildren. Uh, in my career, I am proudest. No matter what I've done, no matter what award I've gotten of these books. Well, they're yours. You yeah, but I, they're it, I just can't believe it. I can't believe they exist. So I see you're going to have a CBBC show. Based on this, is that <gasps> now we are today is the fourth, uh, the fourth um, episode in uh, in, in it, England right? in in uh, in the United Kingdom. You're you're in it. I got to play Mr. Rock, who was the good teacher. He said one sentence to me. He said, "Winkler, you're going to be okay." And I kept that in my heart until today. One sentence. So then I thought, "Oh my goodness, how powerful." Is it for us to say something very important to a child that will give them uh, a life raft? And that's what you guys are doing. We hope so. You hope so. With laughter. Yes. As long as you go out the same door you come in. You bet. (laughs) And throwing jokes all the way. (laughs) Henry Winkler and Lynn Oliver are best-selling authors. 26 books about Hank Zipser. These latest are for when he was... For, for younger readers. Here's Hank, bookmarks are people too. Here's Hank, a short tale about a long dog. A fine dog, by the way. A fine dog, who also we find out in uh, the 15th book that he is ADD. <laughs> the dog, yeah. The dog, yes. <laughs> Thank you both. What Thank a you. pleasure. It's what a, great to be here.